YouTubers, Shaney D's in the house. I'm just doing another little video today. It's going to be how to replace a TD5 Defender turbo. I'm putting a hybrid turbo on it. It's just a turbo which I've, I've rebuilt and I've just put a hybrid core in it. So basically it's got a, a bigger compressor wheel, which is a billet wheel. Uh, so basically all I've done is, there's the turbo, it's already finished off, I've done it. So basically, I purchased the core, um, second hand turbo obviously, and the wheel is a billet wheel, and it's slightly bigger by a couple of millimetres. So what I've done is I've just got the compressor housing, and I've just got it on the lathe, just a nice old lathe we've got there, just chucks it on there, just to bore it out, so it'd fit the compressor with a slightly larger compressor wheel in. So that's all built up and ready for action. Um, so basically, we'll do that. Also, you can actually purchase a full core, which has already got a billet wheel on it, and it'll just fit a standard turbo. So you can rebuild it yourself. So all you've got to do is just strip down your turbo, and then insert your core and bolt it back up with the correct orientation, just mark it all off first. Um, so you've got all your oil feed and your return with both housings all correctly orientated. Uh, you really should set up your actuator again, uh, but it'll be somewhere in the ballpark anyway. So you can, you know, you can do it yourself quite easy. No need to buy a full turbo, you can just buy a core and do it yourself. It is really, really easy. And also uh, exhaust manifold gasket. Uh, I'll show you how you can try and eliminate warpage of the exhaust manifold, which is quite common, especially on remapped uh, TD5s running big maps. Exhaust gases get really hot and warp the manifold. Um, so you can actually modify your standard manifold just by cutting the webs out. So just the cast webs in between each cylinder. If you can get a grinder on them and cut them out, and then uh, you can get a paddle disc and smooth it all off. I've already done it on the manifold, what's on mine, so I'll show you that as well. And uh, we'll get it all in bits then, so we'll just undo everything, take the bonnet off, and then uh, start digging into it. So first up, we've got to take the heat shield off. So basically just got an eight millimeter bolt there, eight millimeter bolt there. We've got a 10 mil down this little access hole here. So I've just got that one undone already. <laughs> There she goes on the floor, so that one's out, and the 8 millis. And that'll just come off, get out of the way. So usually, they usually pull the studs out on the rays, you can see this is blowing slightly this, um, but it's not snapped the studs, but they either pull them out or they, they snap them, and it's usually the rear, sometimes the front, because basically the exhaust manifold will warp and it'll bend like a banana. Uh, so sometimes you've got to take them out, extract the snap stud, and helicoil the two rear ones. Uh, other than that, you usually just blow the gasket, but I'll show you the manifold. This one I have actually modified. You can see I've cut the webs out in between. Um, just get some light on the subject. So if you look in between there, I've got no webs in between each cylinder. And I just cut that out with a grinder and that does actually stop the exhaust manifold from warping. So I just lubricate the flange bolts, a bit of WD or something similar. And because I am taking the manifold off, I'll give them a bit of a lube as well. You can actually do the turbo without taking the manifold off, and I'll show you how to do that. So the, the front pipe flange nuts, they're all 15mm. 
and uh, you can get to it quite easy just with a spanner I've already cracked them off there so there's that one and there's one at the back there and there's one here underneath Look at that so that's the front pipe all loose so that's all good and then what you've got to do is I'll just get the light it's going to undo this banjo at the top and then also the oil return at the bottom on the turbo so basically the banjo is that one there which is a 14 millimeter you can just get a spanner on it or a socket and then there's two little eight millimeters underneath which are quite awkward the rear one is so i get a long extension i'll show you how to do that now 14 mil for the banjo bolt on the top which is the oil feed you've got to be careful because there's a copper washer on the top and on the bottom and the copper washer usually stays on the top bit of the banjo and then if you lift that off you'll see the copper washer at the bottom of it there so don't lose that there's the uh, copper washer just keep it together come over here and then we'll move on to the oil return the two little eight millimeters underneath the turbo yeah we do that i'm going to whip the air filter off Normally you don't have an air filter on yours like this. It's just that I don't run a math sensor. I've deleted it out of the map, you see, because um, they're a common failure. And uh, the map's what I do. You don't run a math sensor. And also, undo the boost pipe as well. Get that out of the way so we can get easy access. Put the air filter over there. Pop off. And we've also got the actuator pipe there, so just pop that off as well. So that's out of the way. You can get easier access to these little bolts on the oil return now. So with the rear one, I've got a long extension on it because it's a bit awkward. So that's, that's cracked off. I don't know whether that's focusing on it or not, but that's the one at the back. That's out now. So there's the rear one. It's not too bad, this one's quite easy to get to. Probably best buying a new gasket for this, really. It's like a Teflon coated stainless steel gasket. So that's the oil return. The gasket's actually stayed stuck to the turbo, which sometimes it will do. So that's off. And then your banjo's nice and free. So now we're moving over this side. And it's just the manifold flange bolts. It's just three. 13 millimeter ones is one underneath there as well. So get a spanner on them. And then your turbo should be quite free then. Which it is. So basically should be able to just lift it off and there she is there's the turbo off it's uh, best to replace the gasket as well on this so if you replace the gasket I mean it, it will be all right but it's, it's always best to replace the gasket and also there's the, the return gasket you can see it now it's like a Teflon coating so it's best to replace that one because they do leak quite a lot. As you can see, this turbo is worn slightly because 
it's uh, bypassing a little bit of oil there so the journal bearings will be slightly worn on that there's not too much play in it there's no end flow in it but you do you do see them bypassing oil anyway even when they're still in quite good condition just when they get more and more worn the more oil they pass so that's all you need to do really you can put the turbo on now um, but I'm going to be taking the manifold off because like I say I think the gaskets blown or possibly the manifold might have warped so we'll whip that one off as well so she's ready to lift off now. And that's it, she's off. So this one has had the EGR blanked off. So that's where the blanking plate is. But normally you'd have to undo the pipe and they always snap so if you're going to do it I'd, I'd tighten them up a little bit and then slacken them off and just try and work them free but if they go they go and you've got to drill and tap them so well that usually goes to the front of the manifold and round the front of the engine to the EGR cooler so you'll have an EGR cooler on a 15p on a 10p it'll just be a pipe going to the EGR valve uh, obviously I've got a blanking kit on this one so I've just got a pipe there but normally you have your EGR valve there absolutely useless take it off, throw it in the bin worst thing going <laughs> so as we can see on this get the light on it it has been blowing on the back uh, it probably is a warp manifold that so I'll probably replace the manifold uh, I'll see how flat it is in a minute I'll replace the manifold and replace the gasket if they're not too bad, what you can do is you can get get it skimmed so you can take it to an engineer shop and they can just skim it. I mean, there's methods of doing it yourself. Um, but I'll get a steel ruler on it and I'll see how bad she is. So I'll get the old steel ruler on the go. Make sure there's no crap on there. And as you can see, it's rocking already. So on the back, we've got a good millimetre there. I don't know if it'll focus in there, but if you can see it rocking. So it is warped. You could get that skimmed, it's not that bad that. Um, but luckily it's not snapped any studs. The reason why it's not warped very much is because, like I say, I've modified this and this has been on for six years, this manifold, and they've been run, running big maps on it. So, like I say, I've cut these webs out here and that makes a massive difference so if you get a standard manifold cut them webs out and it'll last a lot longer and a lot less chance of warping um, but but on this I do run two maps on this I've got one of my switched ECU's on this so I run like a fast economy map which is about 170 brake horsepower and then I've got a little switch here and I can just flick that and it switches over the map in the ECU to a big nasty black smoker. So that's a that's around 210 brake horsepower on this. So yeah. So we'll get that sorted out. Get the gasket replaced and sort the manifold out. And also, when the exhaust manifold gasket is gone, you, you sometimes hear a real high pitched screeching on high revs. And it sounds like your turbo's knackered. So a lot of the time what it is, is because it's like a thin sort of sheet stainless steel. The screeching is just that vibrating and it really does sound like your turbo has gone, but a lot of the time it's just a gasket because your manifold's warped. So bear that in mind. So I'm going to use a stud extractor to just examine them rear studs. I'm not too sure about whether they've been pulled out slightly or not so let's 
the stud extractor. It's just got needle bearings in it. It just clamps onto the thread. When you turn it, so hopefully, it should extract and the thread should be okay. But it might have pulled it under the pressure and stripped the threads in the head, you see, then I'd have to helicoil it. So extract that carefully. And it does look like he might have tried to pull them, so I think the yeah, has, yeah. So I don't think you'll be able to see that. But that's the threads that have been pulled out of the head that and that's because of the heat bending the manifold. So we'll have to helicoil that one. So we'll take this one out and have a look at that. There's just a little bit of thread from the very outer bit, but that's okay that one. So we compare it to the other one. You can see one's okay, it's got all the threads with nothing on and the other one's got all the aluminium from the cylinder head which has been pulled onto the thread. So helicoil that one and we should be okay. So I've just took a closer inspection and it's, the threads go deep into the head and we've got over twice as, as many threads as they are on here. So I've got a stud which has more thread on it, it's longer. I'm actually going to tap it a little bit more so there's more threads on it. And on this occasion we'll be alright putting the longer thread stud in it. Because there's plenty of threads, there's a good 12 mil worth of threads deeper into the head. So we'll be okay on this occasion until it goes again, then we'll helicurl it on the next occasion. So we'll go ahead with that now, just to tap a few more threads and we'll get that in. So basically, if I just put this inside the head and put my thumb on it, that's how deep we've got threads. Obviously the, the last 10 mils worth have gone, but that's plenty. If you look at that, there's loads, so we'll be fine with that. So we'll get that tapped up and inserted. So, as you can see, there was the original one and then we've got this one which I've just tapped a bit further down as well so it's, there's loads of thread on that one so we'll get that one inserted and that'll go deep in the head that should be plenty of meat on that so that's all good don't do it too tight because you don't want to go too deep in the head so that's plenty of that, that's all good. And I think I might put one in the top there with more threads on it as well, just so that's a bit stronger for future reference. So we'll get another long threaded one and do that. So these are just M8 1.5, you can get them on eBay. Uh, that's all good. So it wasn't that bad actually, um, probably about a, a mil out. So I've just got some of this uh, emery cloth on a super flat piece of wood. Got the old straight edge on it and it's nice now. So all the way along nice and flush. So that'll do. So it saves me uh, doing another exhaust manifold because like I say, I've cut these webs out to stop it warping, even though it has warped, but I've been running stupid power on it, so that's why it's been warping, because of the exhaust gases have been really, really high. So that's all done now, so we'll get that chucked back on the vehicle. So we got the new gasket there. Uh, if you are going to helicoil, I use these little kits. It comes with the drill bit and the helicoils and everything all in one, so... I'll probably show you how to use them. It's got loads of inserts there which I've added into it. 
uh, show you how to use them in another video but they are quite easy anyway so but we don't need to this time we got away with it so let's chuck this gasket on There's the new gasket everything's falling off and there goes the uh, exhaust manifold so like I say these studs at the back I've put the longer ones in we've managed to get away with it this time so that's not too bad but all the other ones were all right the front ones were okay as well so yeah I'll just get all the bolts on there now and tighten it up nope. Snip them up by hand now. So I'll put a bit of blue alamar on the oil return gasket. You're not meant to, but I like to put a little bit on. So I just thread it on now, it's, it's easier just threading it onto the front pipe and then thread it onto the exhaust manifold, make sure all the pipes are alright and that's it. So I usually start off the uh, the return first while you still got a bit of movement because it can be really really awkward getting them little eight millimeter bolts in start the front one first you can nip them up afterwards let's get the nuts on there Exhaust manifold. There we go. The exhaust front pipe nuts. <coughs> Turn them up nice and tight. Back onto the oil return. And the banjo bolt. Remember you've got the two copper washers. One of them's already on there. Slide one underneath. The oil feed. And then get that through the top. That's okay. Fourteen mil. Not not too tight on this one because it'll crush the banjo. And the boost pipe. Then the actuator pipe. So everything's done virtually there. <clears throat> Got the, uh, the hybrid turbo on, all bolted up. Exhaust manifolds are all nice and flat now with the extra studs in. And like I say, it's been modified so there's less chance of it warping. So that's all good. So 
Just pop the heat shield back over. Two eight millis in the top. You got this one which goes down there. Yeah, filter now. And that's it, all done. All ready for action. So we'll fire her up and see how she is. So like I say, I'm not running a MAF sensor, so I've got a slightly different setup. I haven't got this pipe, which comes from the original airbox, and loops around and goes through a MAF sensor around here, goes into the intake of the turbo. I'm just running a comb filter because in, in the map what I've done, I've deleted the MAF sensor out of it. I'm still using the existing airbox only just to hold the intake uh, temperature sensor and altitude sensor, so that's okay there. Um, you need to adjust your actuator rod so the best way to do it really is to get a decent external boost gauge and just tap in just tee off into this uh, actuator pipe so you tee off and then put your tee gauge on the dashboard and then uh, you can set your boost so basically when you're shortening off so basically you've got the lock nut and there's a little nailed nut there. So basically, uh, some long nose pliers, what you're doing, you're just getting your long nose pliers on the nailed nut and you're just tightening it up like so. So basically, that's going to make it shorter. As if you can see, the actual rod's getting shorter because it's taking up the slack going towards the lock nut. So that is actually increasing the boost so you need to sort of adjust it, take it for a spin, see what boost you're running. Um, I mean, I'm running quite a lot of boost. I'm running about 24 PSI. Um, if, you've, if you've got a boost box or the boost unit built into your ECU, I recommend running around 22 PSI. So you can adjust it up like that. And if you're running a hybrid as well, you get a, you get a better flow and better boost anyway. So yeah that explains that and obviously if you are running more boost you're better off with a large intercooler so just keeps the intake temperatures nice and cool so if you're running a bigger map and more boost i recommend once you change your turbo to change your oil and your filters uh, both your spinny filter and your normal oil filter just to prolong your life of your turbo keep regular oil changes with decent oil and you won't go wrong
feels all right now, back to normal. All good. More boost. So that's pretty much it. Went, didn't go too bad. Had the uh, studs out and the uh, back of the head there. Uh, managed to get away with putting some longer studs in, like I showed you. Uh, but you can always helicoil them. They're easy to get to. It's not a head off job or anything like that. So that's not too bad. Um, yeah, so all good. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you want to check out the other videos on my channel on car junkies, it's all car related. And uh, there's some other Land Rover stuff on there. So... Give us a thumbs up if you like it, or thumbs down if you hate it, and you think I'm a knobhead. Comment, put what you want, and uh, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.